Why, hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about sub projects in Reaper and how they're so useful for working in game audio. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in a blank Reaper project. And before we get into this, I need to make this unbelievably clear. Make sure you've watched the previous video on exporting and fully understand it and have experimented with it. Otherwise, this may not make a ton of sense of why you would do this. And also, as you learn this, follow along and do experiment because you'll start to see the power of this as you start doing it yourself. So we're going to talk about sub projects and what sub projects are is they are basically projects that live within projects. So you can have one giant file. So one giant master project, one giant master reaper project and have thousands of sub projects within it, each with their own individual sound kind of built in. And typically how sound designers work, especially on big games, is they'll make an individual, in most cases, Pro Tools project for each individual sound. So maybe it's a fireball or a sword swing or something like that. They'll make their own individual project for it instead of having all 1,000 sounds living within just one file. Now, that's kind of a pain because you need to scroll around and find like, oh, here's the fireball Pro Tools project. Here's the sword swing, whatever it may be. That's a massive, massive pain. So what you can have here is one master file that's holding all of your individual sound files within it as individual sub projects inside of it. It's really, really, really handy, unbelievably useful, kind of like alternatives in logic or chunks within digital performer. But I would say even better, even more useful, especially for game audio. So let's start to kind of determine how all this goes. Now, the first thing I want to show you is just how to make a sub project. So I just have a blank track here, but I'm just going to click insert and new sub project. This isn't my favorite way to go about this. And I'm going to show you my workflow later on, but I'm showing you this so that you understand how it works and maybe make up your own workflow because the workflow I'm going to show you is very, very me specific. All the other sound designers are going to do their own thing. You're going to do your own thing. All Good. So I'm just going to show you how these work in general. So I'm going to say insert new sub project. And you can kind of call it whatever you want. So I'll just call this like sub project tutorial. Great. Fantastic. So an interesting thing just happened. So right now we have this kind of blank sort of file here. It's just kind of this audio file with nothing on it. And at the top here, you see a new tab opened called sub project tutorial. So if I click that, you can see that we kind of have this blank new project right here. So I'm clicking back to the original and clicking back to sub project tutorial, which we just created. And you see these markers that say end and start over here. We'll cover that in a second. But basically what this just did was on this track, it placed a reference to our new sub project. So if I double click this kind of empty file you see here, it's going to open up that tab of our sub project tutorial. So anywhere I move, this doesn't really matter, but this is just a reference to a project living inside of our Reaper project. I hope that makes sense so far. So if I double click this, you'll see that here we are in a blank new sub project. Now a sub project in terms of functionality has zero difference from a regular project. You can do everything within a sub project that you can within a regular project. They're just essentially a nested version of this project living within this first one. Now I'm clicking back to this first tab here and you'll see kind of a message prop up that's talking about rendering sub project proxy. We're going to talk about that in just a second. So don't worry about that if you're clicking around and experimenting and that comes up. Just hit yes and move on. We'll talk about that in just a second. So I am going to make just a basic couple layer sound within this sub project just for demonstration purposes. So I'll cut back and let you know when the sound's done. Okay, so here we are, we're back. I just chose three completely random sounds from this robotic life forms library that I have here. And here is what it is. Cool. Pretty good for it being completely 100% randomly chosen and not mixed in any way, shape or form. But here we are. That's, let's say, hypothetically, the sound that we have within the sub project. Now, before I tab back over, there's one thing I want to show you. And these start and end regions do kind of actually matter where they are. Because when I click back to my original project, you're again going to see that kind of message that popped up earlier talking about sub project proxy rendering. So I clicked this first tab, this 
master project, essentially. And it's asking, okay, do you want to render this? And what it's basically saying is, do you want to take this file and within the bounds of the start and end markers that we have here, do you want to make a render of it? So just to make that 100% clear, I'm going to hit yes. And what it's going to do is render that. And now you can see in our master project, you're going to see an audio waveform appear on this sub project kind of proxy, which is basically a representation of what's living inside of our sub project. So I can drag this out to make sure we're getting the entire bounds of that sound and want to hit play. We're getting the same sound that we heard within our sub project. So basically what this is doing whenever we tab over within the bounds of our start and end markers, it's rendering or basically bouncing these files, everything that lives within it so that when I go back to my original project, I can listen to what's within those sub projects without needing to click into every single one of them. And the nice thing is, is because it's rendered already, it doesn't have to process any effects. It doesn't need to do anything that you had to set up here. Meaning when we're just listening to sounds in our master project after they're rendered, it's taking basically no CPU whatsoever. So you can just kind of listen through your sounds without opening any sub projects because they're already kind of pre-rendered and ready for you to listen to. It's really nice. It's just a great feature to have, especially again, when you have thousands of sounds in a single game. Now, before we get into things like X exporting from sub projects and kind of how to work with them and how I like to work with them, we have something very important to do. It's tea time with Dane. Okay, so we're back in Reaper. We have our sub project. We have this first sound over here. I want to show you my preferred way on how I like to make sub projects and work within them. Again, you don't need to follow this in any way, shape or form. This is just the way I do it. And maybe it'll spur you to think of ways on how you'd like to do it. So I'm going to make a new track. Let's say this track is going to be a container for a new sub project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag a kind of region of time. And what we can do is move this track to a new sub project. So let me show you what that means. So I'm going to bring up this actions menu here, the shift question mark that you've seen me bring up a trillion times before. And I'm going to say move sub project. So there is a item that I really like to use called track move tracks to sub project. Now I'll show you what that means in just a second, but I really, 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 really like this. It's super fast, super efficient. Instead of sitting insert sub project, I can just choose a region of time that I want to insert the subject sub project on. So I can choose left click and drag a time area that I want the sub project to live on. Hit control option M, which is my shortcut for it. And what it does is it takes this track that I just made and moves it into a new sub project. Now you can see here that again, just like last time, it's kind of a blank file. It takes up this entire region that I've already kind of highlighted. And when I click over to this tab here, you'll see interestingly that the start and end times of this kind of section are based off of the time selection I chose here. So maybe I don't want that to be the case. Maybe I want to actually make it so that the start and ends shove on over to the very beginning. Again, this is just how I like to do it. You don't need to follow this. This is just a preferred method that literally every sound designer is going to do completely differently. So I'm going to open up my shortcuts and I'm going to find a shortcut just to remind you that this exists. So I can find a shortcut based on a shortcut I really like, Shift Option T. And what that does is there is something I like called time selection, crop project to time selection. So crop project to time selection. Now, there's a reason I'm telling you this, even though it seems like a bit of a tangent. So basically, I chose this area of time. I moved this track to a new sub project, which creates a new sub project. And then when I mouse over to this third or the second sub project that I've created, you can see that my time zone is still selected based off of this very first one. And my start and end regions or my start and end markers are set up based on this time selection that I have in my very first tab. Cool. But let's say I want to shove it all over. I want it to not have that dead space at the very beginning. I can use that shortcut that I just brought up where I can crop the selection. I can hit shift option T. And what that does is it 
gets rid of everything in the beginning, all the dead air in the beginning. So everything's all nice and neat now. Again, very specific to me. That's just how I like to do things. So I could make a sound in here. I could render it. And then what I could do after it renders and all that is I can use the same shortcut that we had in the previous video, the shift option C, where I can choose one of these kind of proxies of these sub projects, these pre-rendered sorts of sounds, hit shift option C, and I can basically use all my region export stuff that I learned in the last video, that I did in the last video, and export each of these sub-project proxies as individual sounds. So I have all of my kind of hard work, all of the processing, all that sort of stuff living inside of sub-projects, and that's all done, that's all rendered, that's all pre-rendered out here. And then I can export all of those files here within this master project view so that I'm not using any CPU. The exports go really, really fast. They're very, very easy to deal with. Much, much quicker, especially if you're on an older computer. This is a great way to go. It makes it so that whenever you export, it doesn't need to process through the reverb and compression and all the other plugins that you're using. It just balances, it just exports these pre-renders that you already have. Now, one thing I also want to show you, let me just kind of right click up here and delete this region. One thing I want to show you, I'm going to make a new track. And based on what I named this track before I move this into a new sub project, that's what the new sub project is going to be named. So I can call this like test sub project two. Let's say that's what I'm calling it. Click and drag a zone of time that I like to work with, control option M. And now this sub project is called test sub project two with some date and time stuff in there too, but it's called test sub project two. So it makes things a little nicer. I can hit shift option T cuts out all the gook and then it's going to render between this start and end zone. So let's say I make my sound and it ends up just being longer than I expected. I can just move this out and it'll render within those zones. So let me show you how to switch between tabs using a keyboard shortcut, just like working in a browser. So I like to keep the keyboard shortcuts the same as a browser because, you know, it makes things a lot easier when you're switching between things. So the thing I want to show you is next tab. So there's one called next project tab and another one called previous project tab. So mine for that for next tab is control tab, just like in a browser. And for my previous project tab, it's control shift tab. So I can hit control tab to switch between all these projects or control shift tab to go backwards. Now, before we finish, let's set up one last shortcut, which is closing each of these tabs. So I'm just going to type in tab because you're going to see a bunch of shortcuts here that relate to these project tabs. So some of you may want to change some of these settings. Totally. You can change the render settings. You can make it so it doesn't render every time. You can make it so it has to render every time. You can make it so it asks you. There's so many render settings. I don't want to go into that. You already know more than many, many people who are diving into Reaper. So you are set to go, especially when it comes to game audio stuff. But the shortcut I want to show you right now is close current project tab. Mine is command F4. Again, choose whatever you want. So whenever I am done with the sub project, I can just hit command F4 and I'm out. All right, thank you so much. I hope that was useful, especially when it comes to sub projects, because that can save you ludicrous amounts of time when it comes to working in game audio. Tweak this to however you want, make it work for you, play around with it, experiment, export, make sub projects, make a huge mess. You'll start to learn how this all works and how to make it work best for you very, very quickly. So if you like this video, of course, like, comment, and subscribe, all that standard stuff. And also sign up for my newsletter if you're interested in working in the game audio field, whether a composer, sound designer, voice actor, anything like that, full-time. If you want that to be your actual full-time career, sign up for my newsletter because I share all the best tips on how to find work, how to start finding work, how to practice sound design, how to practice music, how to have the right mindsets when it comes to having a creative career, and especially in the hell times we live in now, how to find work even during a global pandemic and no matter where in the world you live, even if you don't live in a game industry hub like Seattle or Los Angeles or Berlin or something like that, how do you find work? You can do it. There's absolutely ways to do it. And my newsletter reveals all of it. So thank you so much for watching. Sign up for that newsletter. Get those two free courses that I also offer as a part of it in the description below and the card up above. And I'll see you in the next one.